Hey everyone, welcome to video lesson 5.1. Today we're just going to touch upon uh, similar figures. Um, I have Dante here today. Say hi, Dante. Say hi. Say hello. No? Um, just some expectations um, that I have for 5.1. Alright, you can get down. Um, we are going to be able to use calculators for this video, and you'll be able to use your notebook for the Chapter 5 test. Um, make sure you take pay, uh, notes on each page, um, and any pages marked with um, class discussion, it will be pretty big red letters. Um, you're expected to complete those problems and bring them back tomorrow so you guys can work in groups and talk about the questions and the answers. Um, and at the end... Say hi. And if there's uh, any questions that confuse you, uh, just pause the video, take note of the time of how far you are into the video, and um, we'll answer those questions in class as well tomorrow. All right, so here we go. Is that your work? And one last thing you'll probably notice on the top right here, I have numbered uh, the total number of slides you'll be experiencing today. So as you go through the notes, please number them, notes on page one, page two. Obviously for page one here, you have absolutely no notes to take. So your notes for today should start with page two. All right, page two. Um, our essential question for today is, well, this is a question I expect you to be able to answer by the end of this video. How can you use proportions to help make an art uh, to make decisions in art, design, or magazine layout. Okay, so here we have two questions or comments. In a computer art program, when you click and drag on the side of a photograph, you distort it. When you click and drag on the corner of a photograph, it remains proportional or, or proportional to the original. So here's what that means. If I take this picture, click on it, and just drag it in the corner, it remains proportional. That means the picture gets bigger or smaller, but it never distorts or changes from the original. In picture two, you can tell here where we're heading. If I grab this and start dragging it just to the right, what happens to the picture? It's distorted and it doesn't look anything like the first one. And for this third picture, if I take that and just pull it up or down, um, again, uh, doesn't look too similar to the first picture. All right, that's page three. So page three, if you're looking for what kind of notes to take, just talk about what happens depending on what part of the picture you click on. Here, when you click on the corner and drag, the picture is proportional. And if you pull right or left, and uh, if you pull top or bottom, the picture is distorted. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is um, take a look at these three examples. What you're going to do is we're going to try to reduce the uh, photograph to indicate the size for the magazine. Meaning if I want to put this picture of uh, the panda in a magazine and I only have a 4 by 5 square or rectangle, or I have a 5 by 5 rose, could I fit that into a 4 by 4 um, and will it remain proportional? And if I have a 6 by 8 could I fit it into a 3 by 4 and will that remain proportional? So what you're going to do is pause the video here, answer the questions, and then hit play for the solutions. Okay, so here are your answers for A, B, and C. For picture A, the panda, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a proportion. I'm going to compare the length to the width. So if I take a look at just a photograph, it has a length to width of 5 to 6. So what I want to do is take a look at the template that I'm going to be using and write a ratio of length to width from there. So I'm going to put a question mark over here because I want to know if they are in fact equal. So I'm going to put 4 over 5. So again, you can use a calculator. And uh, the question is, is 5 over 6 proportionate or equal to 4 over 5? and we can use the cross product. You can try to reduce. You can try to find common denominator. Um, I'm going to use the cross products. I usually find that to be the fastest. 6 times 4 is 24. 
5 times 5 is 25. They are, in fact, not equal. So would I be able to take this 5 by 6 picture and fit it into this 4 by 5 template? And the answer is no for part A. All right, I am going to erase all the work for part A, so if you still need anything, uh, rewind back a bit and erase uh, and pause. All right, for part B, uh, for this rose, I have a 5 by 5, so I'm comparing length to width, 5 by 5 for the rose, and I want to see if it's proportionate to 4 by 4. And I hope you can tell that 5 over 5 is 1, 4 over 4 reduces to 1. Or again, we can do what we did in the previous example. 5 times 4 is 20. 4 times 5 is 20. So 20 equals 20. So the answer for number 2, or letter B, is yes. Again, I'm going to erase if you need to copy any down just go back and rewind a couple seconds and pause all right part C I have this picture of uh, these parrots it's a 6 by 8 length to width and I'm going to compare it to I need to reduce it to a 3 by 4 and I want to see if it can remain proportionate 3 and is it equal to 3 over 4 so again we're going to do cross product so 8 times 3 is 24, 6 times 4 is 24. So since our cross products are equal, the ratios are proportionate. So the answer is yes for part C. Okay. Um, I have a couple of questions at the bottom of the screen. Um, and the one I just want you to write down and be able to um, discuss tomorrow is the first one. What is a proportion? Now on slide five of eight, this is a class discussion question. Um, did anyone figure out the solutions to these three pictures, determining whether or not they can fit in the templates differently than how I did it? Okay, so have um, if you did it differently, um, your notes you're going to write yes and tell me what you did differently, and if you said no. Um, just write no and I and just write that you did exactly the same as what I did. All right, slide six of eight. We're going to tell whether the new designs, I actually found this question a little confusing when I first read it. These are the new designs right in here. And we want to determine um, which one of these or both of them are proportionate to the original, the one in blue. So we actually need to make sure that all the sides are proportionate. Um, if I take a look at this left side here where you see my cursor moving, I'll color that in for you. This side here, oops, it's too big. Let's just do a crayon. This side here is 8 to this side here is 8. So 8 over 8 reduces to 1. Is that proportionate to 7 over 7? And 7 over 7 equals 1. So now what I need to do is I need to take a look at the other side. I need to take a look at one of the sides here and the bottom. So I need to compare ratios of this side here to the bottom. And if those two are equal, then the two fractions or the two triangles will be proportionate. So I know 8 over 8 equals 7 over 7. So now I need to look and see if 8 over 7 side length to bottom or base is that equal to side length to base. So I'm going to put a question mark here and see if it's equal to 7 over 6. Well, I know 8 times 7 I'm sorry, 6 times 8 is 48, and 7 times 7 is 49. So 48 does not equal 49. So design A is not proportionate because the ratios are not proportionate. Um, again, I'm going to erase down the work. If you need any of it, go back, rewind, and pause. 
Uh, we're going to take a look at design two. Uh, same idea. I know um, eight over eight to eight, so side side has a ratio of one, and six and six sevenths and six and six sevenths. They're the same number, so that reduces to one. So eight over eight equals six and six sevenths over six and six sevenths. Right, if you guys don't have a calculator at home, um, you can use the computer calculator or we could crunch these numbers out by hand. But just remember, in class, you'll have a calculator that you can use. So now what I want to look at is I want to take one side and one base, so eight over seven, and I want to see if it's proportionate to one side and one base. All right, I want to make sure that all three sides are proportionate to each other. And the only reason why I'm not doing the third side is because they're the same measure. 7 is 7 and 6 and 6 sevenths is 6 and 6 sevenths. So I don't need to do a third side in this example. So I did side to base and then I did side to base. So 6 times 8 is 48. So now I just need to figure out this product. I have 7 over 1 times, I'm going to make 6 and 6 sevenths improper. 7 times 6 is 42, and I'm going to add 6 to get 48 over 7. Okay, I can cross reduce here, which is an awesome thing. I know some of you hate it. Uh, 7 and 7 can reduce down to 1s. 7 divides 7 is 1. 7 divides 7 is 1. That leaves me with 1 times 48 is 48, and 1 times 1 is 1, which reduces to 48. So I know 6 times 8 is 48, 7 times 6 and 6 sevenths is 48, so design 2 is proportionate to design 1. Okay, um, any of this give you trouble, just mark down where, like number of minutes um, on the uh, counter in your notes and we will go over an example either exactly like this um, or this one specifically and we'll do it again in class. Uh, this is a bring to class um, for discussion. This is slide 7 of 8. You're going to take this picture here, a picture, um, and don't worry if you can't draw the cup of coffee because I can't draw either. Um, just draw yourself a rectangle and what I'd like you to do is just on the length and width give me one length, one width, and then a second length and a second width that's proportionate to five and four. Um, and those of you that are a little stuck, take a look at it as a fraction. Five over four is equal to, give me another fraction, and five over four is equal to Give me another fraction. Okay, again, if you have trouble, write down as much as you can and we'll go over it in class. And finally, last page, eight of eight. Um, just some vocabulary I'd like for you to write down. Uh, similar figures, they are the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. Okay, so if something similar, um, they look alike, but they're not 100% identical. So figures that have the same shape, but they're not necessarily the same size. All right, we are told these two triangles are similar. So if you can draw them in three colors, awesome. If not, don't worry about it. I want you to pay attention here. Do you notice this? Oops. Do you notice that this side is red and so is this side? Okay, there's a vocab word for that. It's called corresponding. It's either being in the same position or they call it matching angles. It can be matching angles or matching sides. They're not necessarily equal if we're talking about the sides. Um, so side AB corresponds to side DE because they are in the same position. They match, they're in the same spot. Uh, if we take a look at the angles, if we're taking a look at angle B and angle E, they're corresponding because uh, they're matching angles. The angles are actually equal. So angle B does equal angle E. But if we're talking about the side A to B compared to D to E, 
the side lengths have to be proportionate, not equal. All right, and, the, and again, if some of this vocab word is confusing you, uh, just write down the definitions. Um, we're actually going to apply these vocab words in class tomorrow. And the last word I would like you to know is, oh, I'm sorry, I'm ahead of myself. Um, corresponding, once again, we're talking about the sides. All right, congratulations. You have officially finished Lesson 5.1. I'll see you in class tomorrow.